Previously, when discussing inserting clips into the timeline, we did it via the preview window by using the insert or overwrite to timeline functions. And the options that we see here were important in doing so. Another method we can use to insert and arrange the clips in the timeline is via drag and drop. This is done simply by clicking with the left mouse button held on the required clip in the bin and dragging it whilst holding the mouse button into the desired location in the timeline. I'd rather not do this right now, and so I will let go of the mouse button over the timescale, and the clip is not inserted. When using the method of inserting clips using the mouse via drag and drop, there are various things to be aware of, and I'll go over these items step by step now. For our first example, I'll insert one of our clips into the timeline via drag and drop. I'll use the clip Polar Bear 2. To do this, I simply click on the clip with the left mouse button held, drag it to the desired location in the timeline, and let go of the mouse button. I can see whilst holding the mouse button that a position holder appears for this clip, and as long as the mouse button is held, it appears and aids me in specifying the location. And now I can see the clip Polar Bear 2 that I just inserted. I'll zoom in by placing the position pointer on the clip and by adjusting the scale here by clicking and moving the arrow to the left. At this point, I'd like to present another thing. Our clip was one of those that had its color changed, in this case to blue, at the beginning in the bin. After having inserted it into the timeline, we might decide that we want to change the color from blue for whatever reason. And I might assume that it is simply a case of selecting the clip going to Clip Properties, and as we have seen, under File Info, changing the color to a different one. If I reset it to default, then I can see that only the top part of the clip has been reset to its standard color. The reason for this is that the clip is made up of both an audio below and a video part above. As we can see, each part can be selected separately, and therefore I have to change colour for both parts individually. If I pull the clip out of the bin once more, then we see that it has kept its blue colour, and hence we can see that the clip properties are dealt with separately. Clip properties that I changed in the timeline are therefore only used for this one instance of the clip, if I use the same clip again in the timeline from the bin, then it will use the properties defined in the bin. If I therefore go to the bin and change the properties, each time I use that clip from the bin in the timeline, it will use those properties defined in the bin. In relation to working with clips in the timeline, then we see that the properties are fundamental to our work method. If I want to change the properties for a clip globally, then I must do so in the bin. If I want to change them for a specific instance of that clip, I should do it in the timeline. So it's important to remember the two options when changing clip preferences. For global changes, it's best to work in the bin, so that when placing them in the timeline, the changes are kept and for individual changes, do it directly in the timeline. If I go into the bin and change the color back to blue, then we see that they are changed here, but not in those instances placed in the timeline. So if I did want to change the ones in the timeline, then I would have to change each individual instance of the clip. So that's a small example of clip properties using color as an example.